Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Sarah and this is Brown Family Goods. We are in the kitchen today. We've got some new recipes and this is the second installment in my series, New Year, New Recipes. The first one is going to be a recipe for blackened chicken. So blackened chicken maybe is not super new to you, but I wanna share with you today the recipe for blackened seasoning that you can make in bulk and have any old time that you want it. So today we're gonna to do some chicken cutlets with blackened seasoning on them. And we're also gonna to make together a honey mustard sauce to serve with those blackened chicken cutlets. The other day before the Arctic freeze came in, I'm sure that if you're anywhere near to me, you're also in the Arctic freeze, but I had to harvest a lot of broccoli from the garden before the freeze weather came in. So I had about three pounds of broccoli in the fridge that needs to be used. Today, we're gonna to use a pound of that to make a delicious broccoli salad together. This is a fresh raw broccoli salad that I think you're really gonna love. The third recipe that I want to share with you today is a peach cobbler coffee cake. This is going to be divine. I mean, all of those words I love individually. Peach cobbler, yes, I love that. Coffee cake, love that. So combining the two is going to be so tasty. This is the first time making this recipe for me, so I hope that you're going to love it too. Let's see how it goes today, and let's make new recipes together in the new year. For the first recipe today, I'm gonna go ahead and get the peach cobbler coffee cake started because it takes the longest to bake. It makes a big, big batch. You could definitely cut it in half. The only thing is that it takes cans of peaches. It takes a can of peaches and it takes a can of peach pie filling. So cutting it in half would get a little bit weird with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the full recipe. I will save half of it out, but I will probably just freeze the other half of it and then I can take it out when we want it the next time. I'm gonna use my stand mixer today because this will make the process a lot easier for this cake. So into the bowl. First, we've got two sticks of butter that are gonna go in here. This is softened butter, and we're gonna beat this until it's nice and light and fluffy. So make sure it's good and soft, of course. You can leave it out on the counter. Or for me, even, it is so cold here that, of course, I had to put it in the microwave for just a second to really soften it because even the butter that's on the counter right now is not very soft because it is chilly, chilly, even in the house right at this point. So we'll let the butter fluff for just a minute first and then we'll add the sugar in and start to work the two together. All right, I just wanted to tell you one more time exactly what all we're gonna be making today because my intro there left a little bit to be desired. I thought I was doing three recipes and actually ended up doing five recipes. So <laughs> let me just tell you exactly what we're doing today. Of course, right now you can see I'm making the peach cobbler coffee cake recipe. This is kind of a layered dessert and it turned out so well. As, as I said though, it made a giant pan. I think you could easily cut this down into um, half the recipe and just use the peach pie filling instead of the peaches and peach pie filling like you'll see me use coming up. But this turned out delicious. I really think that you will like it if you try it. Or you can always split the recipe into two different pans if you wanted to do the full recipe. Um, next, we're going to do some blackened seasoning mix. So I wanna show you exactly how to make that blackened seasoning that I'm gonna be putting on the chicken today. So you can always do a big batch of this blackened seasoning mix and then you can have it on whatever you wanna have it on. Chicken, fish, shellfish like shrimp or something would be delicious as well. The next thing and third thing that we're gonna be making is the fresh broccoli salad. This salad turned out so good. We ate this for a few days after I made it even. It just got better and better the longer that it sat in the fridge. I loved this. Um, this is a fresh broccoli salad, like I said, so you don't have to cook the broccoli, you don't have to roast it, anything like that. It turns out delicious with just that vinaigrette dressing on it. I'll show you exactly how that goes here soon. And then next up, I ended up doing some Instant Pot seasoned rice. This is more of a method than a exact recipe that you have to use. Of course, I'm gonna share the recipe that I use with you, but this rice can be changed up and flavored any way that you want to kind of complement whatever you're having for your dinner. And like I said, it's more of a method of how to cook the rice in your um, Instant Pot than rather than cooking it on the stove. So it turns out perfectly every time. I think you will like this one too. The final thing is a honey mustard sauce. So this honey mustard sauce is good for so many things. I loved this recipe that I used on this day. 
It can be used for a salad dressing, a marinade, a dipping sauce, as you see later in this video, I'm gonna serve it over the blackened chicken that we do to kind of cool things down. So it is an all around kind of sauce. It's very simple to use, mostly ingredients that you probably already have on hand or always have on hand in your pantry. So easy, easy. So that's the five recipes that I'm gonna be dealing with today. And I hope that you'll enjoy those. As always, I try to put timestamps in the description box for the video. That way, if you wanna skip right through and go to whatever recipe that you're interested in, go ahead and do that as well. And the recipes that I share today, I'm going to be sharing over on my new recipe website that I've finally got done. It's called brownfamilyrecipes.com. So hop, skip, and jump over there if you're looking for a recipe in particular, or some of the recipes from my videos that I have done in the past, I've got posted over there already as well. I'm working my way through my previous videos to get all the recipes over there to the website. So if I don't have it on the website yet, it's still in the description box for the past video. But once I put it on onto the website over there, I will put the link for it there to the recipe website so you can click right over to it. Okay, so now I have my baking dish here and I went ahead and sprayed it with some nonstick spray, of course. Now this is where you could decide what to do. Have it into two different pans. I think that would work really well. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the bigger size pan, the full size pan, and um, then Later on, if I want to freeze portion of it, I can freeze some of it. So this recipe says to put about half of this batter into the bottom of the baking dish here. And then the rest of it will save to dollop on the top a, a little bit later once we put the pie filling and stuff on. So I'm just going to kind of spread this. You know what I want to do? I think if I used a smaller something. I will probably be able to spread this a lot easier. I'm just gonna spread this out into a thin layer in the bottom here. Now this is a thick batter, so it's not like the most spreadable thing in the world, but this is not working, so I need something. Get a little bit of water, that way I can put it on my fingers. Okay, better. Okay, so I finally got the batter pushed into the bottom and I just kind of spread it into a thin layer. I just dampened my fingertips and pushed it around. It's so, it's a thick batter, as I said, so it's kind of hard to move around with just a spatula or something. So now it says to combine the peaches. I'm gonna get my bowl out here. Uh, it says to combine the peaches and the pie filling. So you're just making an extra peachy pie filling here. And then we will spread that on top of this mixture. I'll just dump the pie filling into this bowl with the peaches. It's probably good that we're adding more peaches here because there's not very many peaches in that pie filling. Okay, now we can put this, spread this over the batter in the bottom. Now we're gonna add some dollops of this batter that is remaining to the top of this before we mix up the crumble topping that will go on last. So I'm gonna use a cookie scoop in order to put this on because I just feel like that's gonna be the easiest way to go here. Okay, now I'm just using a little bit more water to push this down and spread this around just a touch. The last thing that we're gonna do here is mix up the crumble topping. And I've got all the ingredients for it right here. That way we can just cut it together with a pastry cutter. So first things first, what is going to go in is some flour. There's a one cup of flour a little bit of cinnamon for the top, some oats. This is quick cooking oats or 
like instant oats, a touch of salt, I just sprinkled it right on top, and then some brown sugar as well. That is one cup of brown sugar. And then finally, well, let's mix this up with a fork and then we'll cut in the butter. I need to break up that brown sugar a little bit with my hand because it's trying to be clumpy. So now I have one stick of butter that's cut into cubes and just toss this together first with the dry ingredients and then just break it up into smaller pieces. I have it cut down pretty small, but they're stuck together at the moment. Start to work it in. And now I'll go in with my pastry cutter and just start to cut the butter in into smaller pieces. So you just break it down until it gets all worked together, which can take a few minutes. If you want to go even easier, you can just put all this into the food processor and pulse it until it comes like really sandy. The only thing about that with an oat topping is that you can kind of break down the texture of the oats. Um, some if you go into the food processor with it, but it's, I mean, it doesn't affect it too, too much in the end. It'd be so good. Okay. I think that's about fine enough for me. I'm just going to squeeze it together into some crumbles with my hands, just like this. This is going to go on top and just sprinkle it on nice and generously. As I'm putting it on, I'm squeezing it into some clumps like this because those are always so good when you get a nice big bite, have a little bit more texture to it. Now, if you wanted to, you, if this seems like a topping that would be so good to add nuts to. Also, if you are a fan of nuts, I'm not going to put them on this because sometimes we like them, sometimes not. Now, this does bake for a very long time, so that may be a good reason not to add nuts because they could potentially burn. Okay, so that is plenty of crumble topping on there. Let me just give my hands a rinse and then we'll get this into the oven. Okay, I've got my peach cobbler coffee cake all done and it is ready to go into the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees and this is going to bake for 75 minutes at least. It says until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. So when we see that it is bubbly and the center is done, then we will take it out. So Better get it in now because it's going to take a long time to bake. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, um, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life.
peach cobbler coffee cake after it came out of the oven. And you see here, I'm putting on a little bit of a glaze. It has a glaze recipe that goes on the top. It's just powdered sugar and a little bit of milk. And I used almond milk for mine and it turned out delicious. This dessert was so good. So, so good, especially warm, of course. If you warmed it up, it was just kind of ooey and gooey. Now, I will say it did not take the 75 minutes. I did bake this for 75 minutes, as it said in the recipe that I used. I think you could cook this for an hour and it would be plenty long. So I have adjusted the cooking time in my recipe that I wrote on the website. But of course, you still wanna check it with the toothpick if you make it and make sure that everything is done in the center as well as it should be. So next up here is the Instant Pot seasoned rice. And I am just washing up some rice for that recipe. I recently started cooking my rice, just plain rice in the Instant Pot. And I thought, why can we not do some kind of seasoned flavored rice in here? And so I looked up some ratios of what water, you know, or liquid amounts to use compared to the rice amounts. And this turned out perfectly. Totally, totally perfectly. I made this one more time since I made this video and it turned out perfectly again. So it is not a mushy rice by any means and it's not like a super dry um, pilaf rice. It's kind of right in between. So it turned out really, really nicely with the texture and the flavor is spot on as well. I think that you could easily flavor this Instant Pot rice to match whatever dish that you're serving along with it. So if you're doing like a Mexican rice, you could do, or, or Mexican dinner, you could do some Mexican flavors in your rice. Um, just use the same method and follow the same ratio for the rice and water, and it will turn out really, really well. So leave the onions in or take the onions out. Whatever you decide is totally fine as far as the seasonings and flavors. But like I said, it's more of a method than anything else. And we really, really enjoyed this. And we've eaten it a couple of times since then. We ate on it a few days after I made it. This is broth, um, chicken bone broth that I'm using here. You can see it's pretty good bone broth, actually. I made this from a Costco rotisserie chicken. I, my husband picked one up for work the other day, um, and he ate what he likes off of it, which is basically the chicken breast. And then he brought the rest home and was like, well, here you go. And so <laughs> I made us one more dinner out of it using the rest of the meat that was on the Costco rotisserie chicken. And then the next day I made some delicious bone broth out of it and it turned out great. I do my bone broth in the Instant Pot as well, and it always turns out perfectly. So I usually just put the chicken carcass in there, cover it with as much water as I wanna cover it with, and then I pressure cook it for at least 60 or 90 minutes to get all of the gelatinous collagen and everything out of the bones. Oh, add a little bit of a splash of apple cider vinegar as well, but it turns out great every time. So back to this rice here, and the method that you use here is to cook it on high pressure for five minutes. As you see, this pot is set to five minutes right now. After those five minutes go off in, on the high pressure setting, just leave it, set a timer for 10 minutes, leave it to set for 10 minutes, and allow that 10 minutes to go by. And then after the 10 minutes has gone by, release the pressure, stir it up, fluff it up with a fork, and serve it right then. It's ready to go. So as you see, this is a super easy recipe. And like, like I said, the texture is perfect. It's perfectly cooked and it turns out great every time. Next up is this honey mustard sauce. And to, on this night, I used it as a sauce to go with that blackened chicken. But this is a great dipping sauce for anything you can use honey mustard for whether you just like it on the side with fries or chicken or whatever. This is a all around honey mustard sauce. I ate it in wraps, on sandwiches, on my burger one night. It was so good. So I, um, this really went a long way for me. So the, I think this recipe is probably the best honey mustard recipe that I've used. In the past, I've just literally done mustard, mayonnaise, honey. And that's good too. But this one has even more flavor and it's a little bit more complex because it has the two different mustards in there and then the rice wine vinegar i think is really what adds the biggest kick to it but this is a great all-around honey mustard dressing and it stores in the refrigerator for up to a week so throw it into a container or throw it into a squirt bottle or something and then you'll have it on hand to use up all week long
So you see me, I'm just gonna throw this into the fridge and then I literally run out the door to pick up Clark from the vet at this point because he was in for his neuter on this day. So it was so interesting trying to wrangle the 150 pound dog into the back of my um, SUV to get him home. He really did not wanna jump up in the back of the expedition at all, at all. So that was really fun. And then once I got him home, I got him settled in and comfortable for a little while and I was ready to get this chicken cooked up. So I'm gonna put the blackening seasoning on here and then it can sit, basically you can put this rub seasoning on at any point and just leave it to sit and, and get flavorful as long as you want. I'm doing mine, I'm gonna cook mine pretty immediately here, but you can put this on in advance if you like as well. So I just cut my chicken breast down into chicken cutlets, that way they cook up really, really quickly in the skillet. Since it is so cold, we are not grilling outside, we are not using the Blackstone right now, and everything is cooking inside of this kitchen right this minute. So um, yeah, I just cook them in the skillet, I put a little bit of butter and a little bit of oil in there, and then cook them in the skillet until they're done. It usually is around three or four minutes aside, um, but just get a good sear on them. And then I take them on out of the pan and I'm ready to serve everything up because everything is done. This meal came together so well. It, everything was so flavorful and delicious and I think you're gonna love it too.